welcome once again to explainingcomputers.com and to the first in an occasional series about spreadsheet skills. In this introductory video, I'm going to explain how to enter and format data, create simple formulas, and use range functions. This will then lay the foundation for the more complex topics that I'll cover in future videos. A spreadsheet is a computerized table of vertical columns labeled with letters and horizontal rows labeled with numbers, with each particular point in the actual table called a cell. So for example here, I'm in cell B2. Now, lots of different spreadsheets are available, including Excel inside Microsoft Office, which has been through various different incarnations over the years. There's also a Google spreadsheet called Sheet, which is available for free and which runs online or as an app. And there are various free open source spreadsheets, including the Calc spreadsheet in LibreOffice and the spreadsheet I'm running here, which is also called Calc and which is part of OpenOffice. I've decided to use the OpenOffice spreadsheet in these tutorials because anyone can go to openoffice.org and download it for free. So providing you've got access to the internet and you've got a computer, you can use the OpenOffice spreadsheet to go through everything I'll show you in these tutorials. What I'm covering here is very much spreadsheet fundamentals, not the sort of cosmetics of particular packages, but the nitty gritty of spreadsheets that will work in any spreadsheet application. Right, let's create a simple spreadsheet. And to do that, I'm going to go to cell A1. I can move around with the cursor keys or I can move by my clicking with the mouse. So I'll click in cell A1 and I'm going to enter a text label, which is going to be office supplies order. This is going to be a spreadsheet all about ordering things for an office. And now I'm also going to put in some labels for the, the headers of certain columns, different bits of information we're putting in, which are going to be item, and price and quantity. And I'll also enter some basic bits of text and data to give us something to work with. So I'll put that in quickly and then we can look at how we format it to make it look better. And there we are. I've entered some basic data, the names of various things you might actually order for an office supplies order, some prices and some quantities. Now that's how the basic data has gone in, but we can make it look a bit better. For a start, you will see that the, the phrase highlighter pen doesn't actually fit in because the column isn't wide enough. So I can take my arrow, my cursor up to the middle of the gap between columns A and B, and you'll see it changes from being a normal cursor arrow to a little arrow thing with sort of a arrow pointing it either way. I can click and drag and I can make this column wider to actually fit in that label. I can also do the same thing at column B where the column's a bit too wide, and I can do it again on column C. So things start to look a little bit neater. We've also here got the fact that it's formatted the uh, text labels all to justify to the left and all the numbers to correctly justify to the right. But it would look better if it wasn't like that. So I'm going to click on cell B3 containing the word price, click and drag to also highlight a range of cells B3 and C3, and then I'll go up to the toolbar and I'll click on right justify to line things up. I think I might also like my labels to be in italics, so again I'll click on cell A3, click and drag across, and click on the italics icon again from the menu bar. It might also be nice to have slightly less of a space between the title and these items, so I'll go between rows 2 and 3, click and drag and make that slightly less, and I think I'll click on A1 and put the title into bold. Final bit of formatting I want to do here is to make these numbers appear as currency. So I'm going to click and drag down this range of numbers. You'll see they're not all particularly lined up at the moment, the decimal points don't line up and they aren't indicated to be a currency even though they're in a price column. So I'm going to right click to bring up a menu which means I can then format cells. Now spreadsheets have lots and lots of different formats available. You can see down here number, percent, currency, date, time, scientific, all sorts of things and you can choose all sorts of formats inside those formats. But here I'm going to select currency and you'll see it's by default given me GB pounds because I'm in the UK, but it would be different if you were in another part of the world. If you need to set which currency your, your spreadsheet uses as a default, you should go into the language settings in the options. But here, GB pound is fine. I'll click OK and it's formatted things up as currency. 
I could also have done that using the toolbar. If I just press Control Z to uh, get rid of what I've just done, do it undo, I could go up here and I could press on there and again, it would have done the same thing. But I wanted to show you there's a whole range of formats available if you want to use them. But there, that's the start of a spreadsheet. We've put in some data, we've done a little bit of formatting and tidied things up. Right, I think it's time to get the spreadsheet to do a bit of work. So I'm going to put in another column. Column D is going to be a total column, which will work out the price of each particular line in our spreadsheet. I'll put total in there, and then I'll go up to the top and I will click on italic and I'll click on the justify icon, right justify, and I'll also take the size down, keep things neat as we're going along. Now, the total cost of, say, buying copy paper here is going to be the price of each individual ream multiplied by quantity. So it's going to be what's in B4 times what's in C4. So I could go to this cell here, cell D4, and press equals. Equals tells the spreadsheet we're going to enter a formula. And I could actually enter into that B4 multiplied by C4 and enter. And that would work. However, I could do that in an easier way. If I double click on that cell, you will see it shows me that formula there now, B4 times C4, and it's highlighted with colors the two different cells it's coming from. And that indicates the spreadsheet could have worked that out for me. So if I press escape, I'm just going to delete what's in that cell for a second, press equals, but this time I'm going to actually click on cell B4, and then enter my multiply sign, and then click on cell C4, and you'll see the spreadsheets put the cells in for me. I press enter, we get the same result, but the spreadsheet's done some of the work. Now, we then want to have this total used in all the other rows. So I could, of course, do this by going to cell D5, and I could in here do an equals, and click on B5, and multiply, and click on C5, and enter. That would work, but if I had a very long list, that would take me a lot of time. So what I'll do is get rid of that, and I will copy the formula down the actual spreadsheet. Now there's various ways I can do that. In fact, there's lots of ways I can do that. I could go to D4 and go to the menu and go edit and copy. Click on the first cell I want, click and drag, highlight the whole range, and then edit from menu and paste. That would work absolutely fine, but I'll get rid of that for now. Or I could have gone to cell D4 and I could have right clicked and picked up copy there. And then again, click, click and drag, right click and paste. But again, I'm not going to use that. The final thing we could have done, probably the best one, is to click on the cell we want to copy and go to the uh, bottom right corner and you'll see there's a tiny box. And if I move my cursor over that, it changes from an arrow to again, a small cross. If I click and drag, I can move that down, it highlights the range and it'll drop in the formula. So there, it's copied the formula down the column. And you'll see that although we've got a formula, if I double click there, which is B4 times C4, if I press escape, always in, in a spreadsheet, if you're in trouble, press escape, it'll get you out of it. If I now press on the cell below, cell D5, double click there, it's now got B5 times C5. Escape again, look down there, it's got B6 times C6. In other words, it is altering the formula as it goes down to give you the correct answer at the end of the column. You don't always want a spreadsheet to do that, and I'll explain what happens when you don't want a spreadsheet to do that in my next video. Right, let's make our spreadsheet do even more work. I'm going to put in a, another text label here called a total cost of order, which of course you would want to know. So I'll enter that in there, and again be neat and just put a little bit less space in there to sort of make it look nicer. And I'll go over to cell D10, where I want my total to be. Now, one way to do this total would be to use what we've just looked at to press equals, and then to click on D4, and then go plus D5, plus D6, plus D7, plus D8, and enter. And that would work perfectly well. However, that's a long formula to enter, and if we had hundreds and hundreds of rows, it would take a very long time. So I'll escape out of that, and I'll delete what I put in there, and I'll use what's called a range function, a function that works across a range of cells. And the one I'm going to use is the most common in a spreadsheet, which is called sum. So I'm going to press equals and sum. And then the format here is to open a bracket 
and to give it a range of cells, which you do by telling it the first cell you want to go from to the last cell with a colon in the middle. So here I actually want to sum from D4 to D8. I could type D4 and a colon and D8, close my bracket, press enter, and it would sum up the total of that column. Now again, I could do that using the spreadsheet to help me out. I can go to there, I could delete that, and I could go equal sum, open my bracket, and I could click on D4 and drag down to D8. You can't see it on the screen because of the width of the column there, but when I close my bracket and press enter, it would give me exactly the same result. So that's shown how we can do an automatic sum inside a spreadsheet. And you'll see if I change, say, one of these numbers, say that 20 was actually a um, 47, it would alter the figures and the thing would work through. That's the beauty of spreadsheets. Once you've got your data in, you can change one figure, everything will change. But for now, I'll put it back to 20 because I like 20. There's all sorts of other range functions available. So I'll go down here and I'll write, say, average price. What if we want to know the average price of something here? Again, I'll keep things tidy. I'm trying to keep things on screen with a big font so you can see things easily. I could go down here and I could enter equals average. You will guess this will do an average. Open up my bracket and I might want to do an average of the prices there and bracket and enter and that'll show me the average price. And again if one of the prices changed, say that was $17.99, the average price would obviously change as well. Again I'll change it back. So there you see the basis of using range functions to do things like sum up cells or get an average figure. Okay, so far things have been going very well, but as you know with computing things don't always go well and you have to know how to get out of difficulties. So let's pretend that maybe in here we've got 5,000 highlighted pens in our order rather than just 50, and we'll put in 5,000 there and then, oh dear, suddenly you can't see a total for highlighted pens, you can't see a total cost of order. This frequently happens and many people look at spreadsheets and they go, what would I do? It's all gone wrong. They look at the formula here, double click, the formula looks fine, why can't you see what's happening? And if you get a row of hash symbols in a cell in the spreadsheet, it just means that cell can't display the figure, so rather than giving you a bit of the figure, which would be misleading, it tells you it can't fit it in. So all we have to do here is go up to the gap between column D and E and drag out and eventually it would fit in. There it'll fit in one figure but not the um, total cost. Drag out a bit more and it will fit in. So if you ever see hash symbols in a spreadsheet, don't worry, just widen your columns and all your numbers will come back. Now that we've covered the basics, next time I'll turn to the more complex topic of absolute and relative cell addresses. But now that's it for another video, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.